Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Today, I want to show you guys how I parse 99s as an arcane mage in phase one of Season of Discovery. As of recording this video, I am ranked 65th in the world for complete arcane raid parses. Part of that is because too many of you nerds are out there playing fire and I'm here to change that. Arcane is not only a lot of fun, but in phase two we get access to arcane power, power infusion, moonkin aura, and innervates. Add on whatever new runes we get, with the possibility of replenishment showing up, and Arcane is going to be sick. I am already having a blast though, and with my raid's current kill times, I am not having to evocate most fights. As far as gear goes, I'm not going to go too much into Biss List, I'll have a link to Wowhead's Biss List below. TLDR is Prio Int and Spell Power. I started feeling comfortable around 2100 mana unbuffed. Based off your raid's kill times, you might need more or less mana. Here are the talents I use. Right now, you only need three points into Arcane Focus. Arcane Concentration for clear casting is a must-have. Improved Arcane Explosion is nice for trash, but not needed for parsing bosses. While I was getting a lot of use out of Wand Specialization early on, I am never wanding now. You can take Magic Attunement if you don't want the Wand damage. One point in Meditation for the Mana Regen. For Runes, I am currently running Arcane Blast, Living Flame, and Burnout. I could see Enlightenment being better in future phases, but right now the fights are so short that it doesn't get enough value versus the crit from Burnout. Let's talk our consumes. You'll want all the world buffs, Boon from BFD, Ashenvale damage buff, and Darkmoon Fair buff. If Darkmoon Fair is in town, get the 10% damage buff as well. Do not take the 10% in buff. Always take the damage buff. If you are an engineer, Heavy Dynamite and Minor Recombobulator for the extra mana. You'll want regular mana potions. For food, you'll want smoked sagefish, 3 MP5. You can take Elixir of Firepower for living flame damage as well as fire blast damage. It is a little sweaty though. You will also want Scrolls of Spirit. Speaking of scrolls, mages have a new feature called Scrolls in Season of Discovery. I am working on a video that goes more in depth into this system and what I like and dislike about it. The TLDR of it is though mages identify these scrolls and they can provide you with some unique buffs. You'll want to buy Comprehension Charms from the Reagent Vendor, and you'll want to use them on these four scrolls. Thenic Lunate, Omit Kessa, Wubba Wubba, and Scroll of Voicewell. These Tier 2 scrolls have a chance to drop a special green scroll that is unique to mages. You are specifically after the following two. Scroll of Arcane Power 1, it increases your crit by 1%, and Scroll of Arcane Recovery, it gives you 8 MP5. These are pretty RNG to get and kind of a pain, but I'll be going over that and my thoughts on it more in the video tomorrow. Finally, you'll want Black Fathom Mana Oil, which provides 2% hit and 12 MP5. Your raid may require you to use free action potions or shadow protection pots on Kelris, but your healer should just get good and let you mana pot. Okay, let's talk rotation. This may change based off where your current mana pool is, as well as your raid's kill times. In general though, I follow these rules. For the opener, I will precast Arcane Blast as the tank is about to pull. I build up the four stacks of Arcane Blast and then Living Flame. Living Flame now consumes Arcane Blast and will benefit from the 60% damage increase. After that, your rotation depends on fight length. If the fight is less than 60 seconds, I will use Arcane Blast four times and then use Arcane Missiles. Repeat this for the rest of the fight. If the fight is longer than 60 seconds, I will use Arcane Blast three times and then use Arcane Missiles, repeating this for the rest of the fight. When Living Flame is back up, I will either instantly use it or build up the four stacks again and reuse it. If the boss is about to die, don't bother wasting your time with Arcane Blast or Missiles. Try and squeeze a last second Fire Blast in. You ideally want to avoid using Evocate. Obviously, if your raid's kill times are too slow, you won't have a choice. The amount of DPS you lose while casting it isn't worth it with the current kill times. There are a few times you can use Evocate, such as Gelhas Phase 2 or Akuma Transition, since they take reduced damage here. As long as you follow the above rotations, have okay kill times, use full consumes and world buffs, you should be fine. Some quick tips for some of the bosses. Baron, you should have your range spread out on the beach as well as the water. This makes it less painful on the hurricane damage. As long as you have a healer covering you, you can also stand in the hurricane and just blast. Pray you don't get the knockup debuff and have to run. Four arcane blast rotation should be good here. On Gamura, don't waste any of your mana during the bubble phase. Apply detect magic so you can see the number of stacks he's at, 
At 20 stacks, I start building my Arcane Blast and time my Living Flame to hit him just as the bubble breaks. If your raid can't one phase him, save your Evocate for the second bubble phase, and you should be able to use the four blast rotation the entire fight. Lady Cerevis is a joke. Just tunnel her with the four blast rotation. On Gelhas, you can do the four blast rotation the entire fight. If you do have mana issues, you can usually squeeze an Evocate in during phase two. If you're having no mana issues at all, you can pre-build your Arcane Blast stacks for the second Living Flame during his final transition. Decursing is for losers. We don't do that here. Only DPS. Jet is an annoying fight because of his lightning totems. The timing of them can ruin arcane missiles. Oftentimes the totem dies so fast you can't even get a full cast off. This is a hard fight to get a rhythm on. Be mindful of the timing of the totem and plan your missiles around that. I assume for most of you guys, Kalros will be a 3 arcane blast rotation fight. My guild kills him fast enough that I can 4 rotation now. Fire mages are solid at going inside the portal, but it's not worth the mana for arcane mages to go inside. Try and have your raid leave you outside so you can just tunnel the boss the whole fight. Akumai is pretty straightforward. Just spread out and burn the boss. Don't bother helping with the adds. Let better AoE classes handle that. It's not worth the mana for you to arcane explosion. So just single target the boss down. If you need to evocate, do it during his transition. For trash, since my guild likes to speed run, I like to swap the living bomb. Arcane explosion is just too rough on the mana. I use a weak ore that makes it easier to swap runes. You just right click the rune and it auto applies it to your armor. Just be mindful that you have to swap back to arcane blast for bosses. If you pull a living bomb, that's gonna suck. Okay, I think that's it. I tried to keep only the important information in here. If you are an arcane mage, I hope this helped you get those glorious 99s. If you are a mage who is currently playing fire, I hope this got you more interested in playing arcane. It is obviously the cooler spec. If there is anything I missed or got wrong, please bring it up in the comments below. I am far from a perfect player and always willing to learn something new. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and blast.